Hello world, it's Siraj, and I built a ChatGPT clone of myself. And in this video, I wanna show you how you could do the same. Let's look at a quick demo here. The first question I'm gonna ask Siraj GPT is, did you make a sports betting bot? Now, if you can recall from my last video, that's exactly what I did. I took this model and I trained it on all of my YouTube videos and all of my tweets. So it should have an answer. And as you can see, it's got a great answer. Yes, I did make a sports betting bot. And it's gonna ask me at the end, can you provide any advice or resources that could help me make it better? I'm gonna say no, but can you teach me about support vector machines, which is a type of machine learning model, and show me the math and the code. And ideally, it should show me that immediately. Perfect, it's done that. Now I can ask it another question. Write me, what's something only I would do? Write me a rap about neural networks. How about that? I mean, ChatGPT can do that, but hopefully it makes one in the Siraj style. And we see one right here. Let me go ahead and wrap it right now. Neural networks have got me thinking. Computers can learn. You can't stop believing. Big data sets, powerful machines. We can create a system that's never seen. Doesn't make too much sense, but I would make something like that. So let me show you how I built this. The first step for us is to explain how ChatGPT works. ChatGPT was created by OpenAI and it was created in three steps. Step one, generative pre-training. Step two, supervised fine tuning. And step three, reinforcement learning from human feedback. In step one, they create what's called a language model to learn the English language. In step two, they took this language model that understands basic English and they fine tune it for a specific task. In this case, we're gonna fine tune it for the task of being Siraj. And in the third step, they made it even better at being that fine tuned task. So in this case, the reinforcement learning will make it be even more like myself. So let's start with step one, generative pre-training. We're not gonna train a language model from scratch. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use OpenAI's GPT 3.5 API to use as our generative pre-trained model. So in order to do that, we're gonna first go to my GitHub page and you're gonna see this chat GPT clone, which we're going to insert our OpenAI API keys into. So the first step for you is to download this repository from my GitHub called chat GPT clone. Once you've downloaded it to your local repository, the next step is to open it up and when we open it up, we're going to see all of this code here with all of this you know, OpenAI you know, index, all of these API keys, and we're gonna replace the OpenAI API key and the organization key with our key. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to OpenAI API page, and we're gonna go under our account. We're going to get those API keys, and once we have those API keys, we're gonna insert them into our code. They're gonna be under settings, that's our organization ID, and then we have our API keys, and we'll just generate a new secret key. We can paste them in there. That's that first step. The next step is, this is already GPT 3.5, and it's running in this React template app that was already pre-built. The next step is for us to turn it into Siraj. So rather than fine tuning, that's something we could do, and OpenAI has an API for that called the Fine Tuning API. It's literally called the Fine Tuning API. We can find it right here, Fine Tuning. Rather than do that, we're gonna do a much simpler step called Semantic Search. And we're gonna go to a website called Operand. And what Operand is, is it's the easiest way to curate and share knowledge effortlessly without any code. That means we can drag and drop all of our public data, including my YouTube videos and my tweets into this. And it's gonna create what's called a knowledge graph around all of that. And what our GPT 3.5 model is going to do is it's going to query not the direct text, the transcripts of my videos, but the semantic search of those videos. Let me show you what I mean. So when I go to my feed here, you can see all of the videos that I've manually added to this knowledge graph. Five ways to increase productivity. Um, Dr. Alan Barrett, 67 questions for a quantum researcher. These are all videos that I've done with subtitles and captions. So if we want, we can add a new video like this one, watch ChatGPT build a finance startup, and we can go back to our operand code here and we'll just add that URL in, we'll hit index, it's gonna grab that video, add it to the knowledge graph when I click on publish, and now it's already added. Once I go to my feed, I can see all those videos and I can make a query. Now this is semantic search, it's not a direct search engine with a one-to-one -one query. So I can say support vector machine techniques, and it should find the variety of those techniques, not just an exact one-to-one -one mapping. So any video where it uses that, Kaggle earthquake prediction, et cetera, it's gonna find those, right? So this is like a more advanced version 
of Google search. It's semantic search. And this is powered by OpenAI's API as well. So once we have that, we're going to get our keys from Operand. So we can call it programmatically in Python. And we can find those keys right here at the bottom, API key. And when we go back to our Python code, we see we've already initialized OpenAI. We've initialized our application. And we see that this is the Operand code. We're going to initialize the knowledge graph with our API key. We can paste it in right there. And once we have our API key in there, it's going to call the API with the index ID of this specific knowledge graph that we've created. And it's going to return the top five results of the most semantically similar queries to what the user asked Siraj GPT. And then we're going to go to the last part. And then what was the last part? Do you remember what OpenAI said the last part was for training ChatGPT? It was reinforcement learning from human feedback. Now, we could do that, and there are libraries on GitHub to do that, like reinforcement learning uh, Instruct Goose. Instruct Goose is a way to very easily train an RL based language model in under 40 lines of code. But we're not going to do that. Instead, we're going to do what's called prompt engineering to solve what's called the alignment problem. So remember, OpenAI trained a language model on English, then they fine-tuned it on specific tasks. But they needed a third step, reinforcement learning from human feedback. Why? Because what happens when you ask a model the wrong question without RL? It's going to perform inference without acting. It's going to passively observe. So if the answer is wrong, it's going to give a wrong answer. And if the user queries it again, it's going to get even more wrong, meaning Technically, it's going to get quadratically worse over time. And this is called distributional shift. That's not that's out of the scope for this video. But the problem is that it's not good enough without reinforcement learning. So we should do that, but we're not going to do that. Instead, what we're going to do is prompt engineering to align it with our goal. That means that the prompt is going to be, this is a conversation between the YouTuber Siraj Raval and a stranger. Every time the user makes a query, this prompt is going to be called relevant information that Siraj knows, and then it's going to take all of the knowledge graph of whatever that user queried, say, what's a support vector machine? It's going to ask Operand, and it's going to return the semantic results, and that's what you're seeing here. Operand search are those semantic results. And that's, the that's how we prepend the prompt for whatever the user asks. So that's when we run the OpenAI Create Completion API, and it's going to say, based on that base prompt, the stranger says a message, and Siraj says what? So Siraj already has that knowledge graph of whatever the stranger asked in his head. And then it's going to use OpenAI's API to complete that block. So there's no supervised fine tuning that's happening here. Instead, it's semantic search, which is a much easier to implement solution than supervised fine tuning, which is totally overblown. And instead of using reinforcement learning from human feedback, we're using prompt engineering to solve the alignment problem. And rather than having it complete our question, we're having it do what we want, which is respond appropriately. And that's that. That's all we have to do for the code. Now, taking that, we can compile it, run it, and we'll run it on localhost. And once it's running on localhost, we can see it. We can start interacting with it however we want. We can ask it questions. And that brings us to our last step, which is to deploy it to the web so other people can use it. And what I like to do is use a service called Vercel to deploy it. And we can see under Vercel, it says, OK, you want to deploy something to Vercel? Please install this Vercel command line tool called Vercel to your terminal. And once you have that, then you can deploy whatever app you want. So we're going to say Vercel, install it. And once we have NBM installed our node, we can install Vercel. It says, oh, I know exactly what Vercel is. Are you sure you want to deploy? To which scope? Link to an existing project? No. Let's create a new one. Here's what it's called, which directory, et cetera, et cetera. And then it's going to deploy it automatically, just like that. So it's going to set it up and deploy it for us. Boom. And now it's deployed to the web. We can see it here. Boom, it's deployed to the web. Now, if you want to sell this thing, you can create a landing page. And the easiest way to create a landing page, I've found, is with this website, Durable. We can build a website in 30 seconds using AI. Let's say this is a software development company. And uh, you know, I'm pick my own software development. And it's called Siraj GPT. And next, and it's going to automatically create a landing page. If you want to have people pay for your app, they can go to their landing page. In this case, I'm just going to open sources for you so you can create your own version of your name, GPT. And that's it for this video. I hope you found it useful. If you did, smash that like button. Please subscribe. That's what keeps me going. And until next time, happy learning.